today's video we're going to be testing out to see if castor oil is the anti-aging secret that we have all been missing out on i decided when i see a tiktok trend going viral i want to know if it actually works and especially when it's something about natural beauty so i wanted to see if it could help with my dark circles with aging skin and with my pcos symptoms so i dove in i've been trying it out for the last 30 days so i can help you decide what are the things that work and are worth your time and investment on. If you're new here, my name is Emma and on this channel we talk about all things health, wellness and well-being for the 40 plus woman and that includes, yes, your skin. So let's get on into it. I was really excited to try this one out, especially after doing my rosemary oil for hair regrowth experiment. I will link that video if you have missed that one because that has been one of my problem spots. As someone who has been recently diagnosed with PCOS, I was experiencing balding patches. In fact, my hair being worn like this is one of my attempts to help improve my hair regrowth. So I had massive success with the rosemary oil. When I saw things circulating on TikTok about power and the benefit of castor oil, I thought I've had castor oil. I've had some in my cupboard for like years and youngs, but I've never been consistent with using it. So I wanted to see if it could have an impact on a few key areas that had been bothering me. So the first one was dark circles under my eyes. Come on, the skin particularly on the back of my hand, which you can see in this video, it had been dry, scaly, and just generally looking pretty old. Like literally my children had said to me, mom, your face doesn't look old, but your hands do. I'm like, gee, thanks kids. But you can always trust your kids to tell you how it is. And after the winter season, my skin's always a lot drier and they were looking particularly old. So I was definitely interested in that. I've also got a small skin tag on my leg. So it's just like a little dry patch of skin that never really seems to heal. Don't worry. I've had it checked out by the doctor though. They weren't concerned about it. It was just something that never really went away. So I wanted to see if putting castor oil on it consistently would make an impact. And then the final one is my PC symptoms so I struggle with PCOS I struggle with bloating sometimes challenged with weight loss and I was really interested to test this one out particularly because a lot of videos that I've watched from people doing using the castor oil packs and like how their waist shrunk like three inches overnight these are generally all people that were quite lean anyway I'm someone who easily holds fat around my midsection I'm a health and fitness coach so it's something that I'm very well and will always consistently work on however it is always the first place for me to gain weight it's the last place for it to come off and I also can get severe bloating again due to the PCOS there can be these moments where I have really sore stomach cramps I can then look like I'm nine months pregnant within a matter of moments and so it is an area of concern for me so I wanted to see if the castor oil is this miracle cure that it seems to be and that could help me with that symptom so what are the benefits of castor oil because castor oil has some interesting interesting properties that seem to make it so beneficial for many different things. This includes it being anti-inflammatory, being antifungal, and also detoxifying. So with these elements within the oil, they can seem to help with a few different areas. You can see out on the internet, there are tons and tons of different claims being made. So some of the main benefits of castor oil include skin moisturization. It's been known to hydrate and nourish the skin, making it softer and smoother. Helps to redry dryness and flakiness. And that is the key thing that I wanted with the back of my hands, with this little patch on my leg. It's known to have anti-inflammatory effects, which can reduce inflammation. Again, soothe irritated skin. It can be used for acne treatment, Again, wasn't one of my key concerns, but it's an area that has been used on. Anti-aging properties, because it contains antioxidants that help to fry free radicals and potentially reducing the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. It can promote collagen production and elastin production. And as on one of my previous videos, collagen is one of the areas that I had been working and been using on to help improve and promote good skin. So using the castor oil was kind of like just an addition to that collagen because that is something that I've also been keeping up with. It's been known to help with the promotion of wound healing and reduce the appearance of scar tissue and even things like stretch marks as well. It's been known to help with hair health and hair regrowth. As I said, I've been doing my rosemary oil experiment and I've actually got some more hair regrowth videos coming up very soon. So if you have been concerned about thin hair, whether that is through to perimenopause, menopause, or like me, PCOS, then definitely stay tuned 
tuned because I've got lots more videos coming up on that one. And I did notice when I did my rosemary oil experiment, one of the carrier oils that they use in the hair oil that I used for that one is castor oil. So as well as help with things like dandruff because it really moisturizes the scalp, it can strengthen hair and reduce breakage. It's also been linked to helping with joint pain and relief as well. Again, due to its anti-inflammatory properties, when people apply it onto the joint, I've noticed feelings of reduced stiffness, reduced inflammation and reduced pain. You can also use <laughs> castor oil. It's very much one of those old wives things. I always remember when I was pregnant that was told if you wanted the baby to come, you needed to drink some castor oil and it's supposed to help with inducing labor, but definitely speak to a medical professional before doing that. But it's also a known laxative as well if you take it orally. For the purpose of that this video, I have only been using it on my skin and it goes without saying I am not a doctor or a medical professional. I'm simply sharing my own personal anecdotal experience of using castor oil for the last 30 days. If you are considering taking it, then do always do your own research and speak to a medical professional before testing it out yourself. Now it's because of these anti-inflammatory properties and help with detoxification that it's also thought it could be beneficial to PCOS. Although the reasons why we get PCOS are not well known or given specifically, a lot of doctors or people will talk about having high insulin levels and how this high insulin level can cause follicles to grow onto the ovaries. Because of the detoxification quality of castor oil, it's thought that this can maybe help break down those follicles and break down the cysts that are onto the ovaries. It can also help with the inflammation as I experience and that bloating and that sore stomach feeling. So as we can see from that list, there are a lot of claims going on around. Now I must say that the scientific research around castor oil, well there isn't very much of it, but that's usually a reason for that when it comes to more natural products because it's not financially viable to put a lot of money into researching something that's natural, some products that cannot be patented and made money off. So just because there isn't the scientific literature to back it up doesn't mean that it doesn't work. It's just that it's not really of anyone's interest to test it out. And that is the great thing about this castor oil. I have been using it for a month. I must have used like a quarter of a bottle. I got a 500 ml bottle and it was about 20 euros. It's really, really super inexpensive. Now, if you are gonna purchase castor oil, definitely make sure that you are getting a castor oil that is in a glass bottle. Because of its ability to draw things out, it can even draw out from the plastic bottles, which is why you must get one that is in a glass bottle. It's should be a dark glass bottle organic and cold pressed is ideal and I'll put some links to the ones that I used down below. So again the science isn't really there to back it up however my own experience has been an incredibly positive one which I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about some of the results that I had but if you are thinking about this then really just test it out for yourself. So I'm now just at the end of using the castor oil for about 30 days and I've been pretty consistent so my results I'm going to show you my before and after picture and now like you can see you can see there are still dark circles there but they are significantly improved from how I was at the beginning of the experiment and I'd also notice that I'm also someone who draws on my eyebrows I have very fair eyebrows you can't see them very well but I have noticed there is actually more hair around the eyebrow I mean I'm never going to be the person that's got a full set of eyebrows but just my skin in general because I've been doing more facial massage every reason my skin feels tighter it feels brighter even round through my neck and I just it just feels a bazillion times better. I literally, I've been raving about this to anybody and everybody who will listen to me. I even recommended it to my friend and she was having the same with uh, wrinkles around the eyes. And some people have been claiming it as like, it's a natural Botox. Now I'm not someone who's ever had Botox, so I wouldn't go that far, but it's definitely had a tightening and firming effect around my eyes. So even though I've still got a slight amount of bags going on, the wrinkles, um, I generally didn't have massively bad crow's feet, but it's all just feeling that little bit tighter, even around on my forehead. I've also someone who has got quite oily skin. Now, this is the thing with castor oil, it is super, super 
thick and you would think oh my god it's going to leave my skin so greasy but actually for someone with oily skin it actually stops my skin from being so greasy all of the time and warning that it might have like an impact like I'm putting it on in the evening I did make the mistake of going to bed straight onto my silk pillowcase which I might have um ruined because if you get it onto your bedding it is gonna sometimes leave patches maybe don't use a brand new silk pillowcase like I did and I've also got into the habit of putting it on like maybe an hour before bed I would normally just like wash my face put the oil on and go to bed but now I've been going up and doing like my skincare routine a little bit earlier in the evening so that I can have the castor oil sitting on my face whilst I'm either reading my book or watching the tv so it's actually soaked in a little bit before I go to bed so it's not quite as thick and gloopy when you get into bed at night and though this wasn't actually a focus and it was when I was doing the research on some of the benefits and it touched on acne I have really noticed this like if I'm, I'm I know a lot of people who struggle with PCOS can have like quite severe acne I don't struggle with that aspect of PCOS but every now and then hormonal fluctuations I might get a pimple pop up and if I had just put some castor oil on the area where the pimple was literally the next day it was gone in fact I had a little pimple here on the corner of my nose this morning and like I can't even see it I can see it a little bit but it's just almost disappeared. I've also been giving this to my 14 year old son who is, you know, going through hormonal changes, starting to get some pimples showing up on his face. He's been putting it on his face and same thing, the redness has gone down, the inflammation has gone down and the spots literally gone within a couple of days. Even if it doesn't flare up into anything big, it seems to have an impact on acne as well, which I wasn't expecting. So another wind of the dry patch that I had on my leg it's practically it's practically disappeared you can still see a little red section which i'll show up on the camera but it's more or less gone you can't really see where the dry patch was i wonder if i stopped doing it would that come back immediately and same with the dark circles i did have a couple of days actually where i didn't put it on and i thought oh my eyes feel look that little bit puffier again so maybe it is something that i have to keep up with doing consistently but it's not a problem for me it's quite nice to do that facial massage and if it helps the way that my skin looks it's absolutely something that i am happy to commit to in my skincare routine so the dry patch on my legs practically disappeared just a slight red area skin on the back of my hands is an incredible difference you can still see that there are like dry sections but again that consistency and I probably could have experienced that with just putting some moisturizer on a little bit more consistent boom but my hands are looking so much better than when they were before I was implementing the castor oil in fact I've noticed such a difference in my skin I've even started applying it onto my arms and legs after coming out of the shower it is really thick though so I do like to combine it sometimes with something like a coconut oil which is also another one of my favorite oils to use to moisturize the skin that is a more natural product that's not going to have any toxins in it with the PCOS this one's a little bit harder to measure like I said a lot of people that I'd seen were already pretty lean and then were saying that they'd lost like two or three inches around the waistline from just having a castor oil pack on I must say I haven't noticed any reduction in waistline doing um, the measurements there hasn't been really any changes on a kind of day-to-day -day. what I have noticed is that there is a reduction in pain and inflammation when my PCOS is flaring up just the other night I had an evening where I forgot to put it on or I just went to bed and I couldn't be bothered doing it and I woke up the next day and I was having a flare-up and almost like period pains really bloated stomachs feeling really sore so I put my pack on again last night woke up in the morning my stomach was feeling flatter a lot softer than it would normally I am still in that phase of having a flare-up I can feel myself feeling super bloated as, I, as I've gone through the day today so it is something that I will put on again in the evening with the castor oil pack I tend to put it on in the evening and I will sleep with it it's comfortable to sleep with but I have noticed that sometimes it makes me really warm having an extra layer around my midsection as any woman who is going through midlife know you don't need any extra layers on that are going to make you any warmer in the evening we are already hot enough in the evening so that is an issue as we're moving into summer I'm not sure if that's going to be as sustainable that maybe I will put a pack on for a couple of hours whilst I'm relaxing either reading or watching tv and have that as part of my 
evening wind down routine and then not to sleep in it i also haven't really been putting the hot water bottle on it again just with the time of year that it is i know if i had a hot water bottle on my stomach before i went to bed i would be up all night like sweating my head off so that was not really something that i wanted to do however i know in the colder months that would be a really nice and comforting thing to be able to do is just to have to pack on my stomach and for it to feel nice and comforting and i've not really noticed can't say whether it's had any impact on the cyst because i haven't been measuring that all i can say that it does help symptoms to feel more comfortable all in all the castor oil experiment has been a huge win for me personally it'd be something that i'm keeping on going with i'm going to keep using it and so if there's any additional areas because i had been having a niggle with my knee and maybe if i started putting castor oil specifically and consistently on my knee that there might be a help in the reduction in the inflammation there and i've also trying to get my husband to use it who's got some really manky cracked sore feet right now so we can get it consistently using it on his feet it will be interesting to see the benefits from there but overall it's been a huge win for this experiment for my own skin i'm going to continue to use it on my hair also actually when i'm wearing my hair down like this it actually also makes for a good hair oil to just keep my flyaway bits in as i'm trying to not have my hair up in a top knot all of the time which is my go-to skin's feeling brighter skin's feeling better skin's feeling more soft better moisturize and for the price of 20 euros for a 500 ml bottle that's probably going to last me five or six months i've even not been using my normal expensive face moisturizer quite as much i'm still going to use that from time to time because i really like the products that i use but in addition this is a super affordable it's non-toxic it's not all natural and it's a huge win for the casserole and recommend it to anybody who wants to see improvements in their skin and maybe to explore if it can be beneficial to you with other ailments and issues that you might have going on so i would love you to let me know down in the comments have you ever tried castor oil what were your results have you noticed any difference since using it and of course if you would like me to try anything else that you've been trying to figure whether it's worth your time or your money investing in, let me know down in the comments and I shall add it onto my list. But we've got lots more videos coming up soon. So if you like this kind of thing, please do subscribe. It massively helps me out and I will look forward to seeing you on the next one.